Hi everybody, here I am, Nikki Edgell, and um, as uh, most of you know, if you're new to this group, I am a nutritional therapist and a practicing clinical psychoneuroimmunologist, and I run this group to help give as much information as I can uh, as, a, as a form of empowerment to you to take charge of your health, to have the courage and the confidence in yourselves uh, to, um, uh, to have your own toolkit uh, so that you can be in charge of your health and, um, and have confidence in your health. And particularly at this time uh, when we are um, really surrounded by a lot of fear and have been for some months now. So this is becoming a sort of chronic uh, situation for a lot of people where, you know, when a stressor goes on for too long, it has this chronic effect, this uh, effect of low grade inflammation. And I've talked throughout the series uh, that of uh, the side effect of um, the fight flight stress response is inflammation. And when it goes on for too long, doesn't come to rest, um, then we, we, we have this chronic inflammation and that affects so many different systems in the body. And today I'm going to be talking to you about the liver and the gallbladder, two absolutely vital systems and organs, uh, part of the detoxification process. In fact, the liver has something like 500 or more uh, different functions. You know, I could spend hours just talking about the liver and what it does it's the most amazing organ it's a very large organ that's situated on the right side just below the uh the breastbone and it goes all the way down it's huge it has this amazing ability to regenerate itself but it also does come under a lot of strain if it doesn't have the nutrient content um, that it needs to be able to, to function within those 500 odd different um, systems. It's the primary organ for detoxification. Uh, everything we eat, breathe and absorb goes through the liver. And... Um, it's also involved not only in detoxification, but in metabolism and storage. Um, it stores um, various nutrients that it makes, and it also stores toxins as well uh, if we can't excrete them. Um, it's able to give itself a spring clean, which is great, but again, only provided it's got the proper nourishment. Um, so it's kind of like the central cog in a really big wheel, if you like. Um, and it's very, very hard working organ. Um, it has an effect on the immune system, which is why I'm specifically talking about it today, but it also affects the endocrine system, the um, nervous system and the cardiovascular system. And in fact, 30% of the cardiac um, output has to go to the liver every single minute. So you can imagine that uh, it really does take a lot of energy from the heart um, and um, that's really important. It controls your blood sugar, uh, it clears the blood of infections, it, um, it neutralizes toxins, it manufactures bile, which is really vital. Uh, bile is um, involved in the production of hormones, vitamin D and other hormones, sex hormones and cholesterol. And cholesterol often gets a really bad press, but actually it's really important. It's part of our protective mechanism and it produces the hormone, hormones. And um, as long as they're in balance, the cholesterols, the high cholesterol and the low cholesterol, um, then it's absolutely fine. And quite often when we see elevated um, low uh, cholesterol, LDL, um, it's because we have infection and the body's working really hard to protect us and to sort that out. So um, there's a lot more to these stories than, uh, than we've been led to believe. 
what else does it do? It's also very much involved in the thyroid function, converting T4 to T3. Um, it converts excess lactic acid, you know, when you have that burning in your muscles, when you've exercised uh, too, too long, um, it can sort that out. Um, it makes enzymes uh, um, and it's really important for um, repair and chemical reactions. So it does, I mean, like I said, I could go on for, for a long time just about what it actually does. 50% uh, of our lymph is made in the liver. And uh, so, you know, when we have excess toxins and we're not keeping up with the, the elimination and, you know, what I talked about the roots of elimination and how, how to support them and liver being one of those roots we need to really support. We also need to support the lymph because so you imagine if you've got this drainage system, if you like, from the cell through the lymph, the blood, the liver and the bowel and out, as I've explained. Um, if the liver gets overwhelmed, then we have excess uh, toxins showing up in the lymph, and then you get that, that those aches and pains and, and maybe glands swelling. And this is a sign that the liver might have problems and might be over overloaded. So uh, the types of things that can um, it really affect the liver or stress and we've we've talked about how stress really um affects the immune system how it suppresses the immune system so we really want to look at look at stress when we're looking at the liver and lots and lots of things can stress the liver um you know chemicals uh, whether they be through your food. I mean, digestion is probably the largest source of um, uh, toxins for the liver, but there can also be environmental toxins that can stress the liver, um, you know, in terms of uh, uh, the air, um, electromagnetic frequencies, radiation, chemicals, um, uh, fluoride, chlorine, all sorts of other things you know, coming into into your um, body uh, via the environment and um, all stress the liver. And I, like I say, it is the central cog in this big wheel. And it's so important that we we really identify um, liver, liver, liver symptoms um, so that we can know, oh, I need to um, support my liver a little bit more. Ideally, we'd be supporting it all the time, but sometimes we need to give it a little extra boost. So I've got this massive list here of symptoms. I'll just read you some of them. Um, so it can be involved, you know, if you if you see any of these, you can say to yourself, oh, okay, right, I, I think I, I, I might have um, some need of some support for my liver. Um, so tendon pro problems, ligaments, joints, muscles, uh, pain, sensitive, fatigue, hemorrhoids, um, different uh, coloured stool could be very light um, and uh, more yellowy, um, uh, mood alterations, so we can feel a bit irritable or angry or you might feel uh, depressed. Um, uh, uh, dark urine with very um, strong smells. Uh, you might find you're not able to eat fatty foods, you feel this nausea or you get a bloating after that sort of thing. Um, skin problems, spots, uh, oil around the, the forehead and the nose, um, allergies to foods or chemicals. Um, if you've um, had coffee, you get that smell of coffee for a really long time after you've you've drunk it. Um, uh, the whites of your eyes, if they're not clear and really white, if they're slightly yellowing, um, that can be a sign of uh, liver um, problems. Uh, if your skin easily bruises or your capillaries uh, break, or you see like little capillary capillary breakages on your on your face, that can be um, a sign. Um, intolerance of alcohol, that's often the common one people think of. It can affect, like I say, your hormones, your thyroid and your menstrual cycle. So you might find uh, you've got 
issues around um, uh, both ovulation, pregnancy, um, and uh, it can be uh, affected by cesarean section as well. Uh, you might find other common uh, uh, symptoms can be um, that uh, you get headaches or you get stiffness around the shoulders. That's very much around, you know, stiffness can be around uh, the gallbladder being affected. Uh, blood sugar problems, uh, very much about liver. Um, sleep, you might wake um, around uh, between one and um, 11 and one uh, in the evening and the morning, that's your gallbladder time, but you might wake between one and three and that's when your liver is most active. You might find you get night sweats or night terrors, um, all sorts of other, um, uh, yeah, there's just so it, it goes on and on and on, on. But you know, that just gives you a little flavor of what might be uh, if, uh, a liver sign of a liver problem so what can we do about this there's particular foods that the liver loves and it's one of the things that we quite often particularly in the west we tend to uh, well in England uh, we definitely do uh, avoid those bitter flavors we tend to want to have sweet and so the liver loves bitter and so things like artichoke um, uh, the greens, um, spring greens, uh, dandelion, um, all of those sorts of bitters, um, beetroot, other 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 foods would be like onions, garlic, turmeric, um, broccoli, rocket, um, ginger, and things like milk thistle and green tea, radishes, those sorts of things. They're all um foods that really support the liver and, and the production of bile which is really key and quite often we have problems with our our stool could be constipated or or loose um, and that can be to do with the bile production too little or too much um, the um the production of a lot of our uh, nutrients uh, happens in the the, li the liver our uh, minerals and vitamins uh, can be produ are produced in the in the liver and so so it's so important that we nourish the liver as much as we can if we're having too much um, highly refined sugars it can really affect the liver um, so what I mean by this is not natural sugars, so so a bit of a bit of fruit is is okay. But if you've got a really problem, big problem with the liver, you might want to avoid fruit altogether for a short while. But uh, what I'm talking about is really process, things that in processed foods like uh, the high fructose corn syrup that's added to a lot of processed foods, um, you know, highly concentrated fructose in things like honey. Um, and um, and other other sh other sh processed sh sugars uh, as well. So um, we we store excess glucose in our visceral cells, and so liver, being one of the visceral cells, can become fatty with too much sugar. Believe it or not. So you know the fruit juices and uh, that. Uh, so often I see um, parents giving to their children a little carton of fruit juice. Imagine how much. Um, how much uh, uh, actual fruit would have to be eaten to, to get that concentration of, of the fructose. So it's, it's, uh, it's like non-alcoholic fatty liver, we call that. And so if you've got too much fats that you can't get rid of, it's impairing all the other functionality as well. So we want to, to get rid of, rid of those. Um, so, so the liver therapy would be kind of no sugar, no fruits, uh, no alcohol, um, that that need to uh, lose the the fat from the, from these organs. Uh, so exercising on an empty stomach, like I've said, lower meal frequency, that sort of thing. Uh, but again, it would you know it depends on each person. So again, that would be an individual consultation to work out what your program would be. But there are certain. Uh, nutrients that you can get from supplements and I'll put those into the, the link below. Um, lots of different things that you know that can be found in all sorts of multis, so Cytone Renew, Liver, 
um, protect um, by a nutri do a really nice one uh, tarasin um, they're also doing these amazing um, teas and a lot of liver supporting teas and again I'll put some links for you um, so yeah lots of antioxidants we need um, what else do I want to tell you about the liver um, yeah so really and truly I think I've, I've, I've spoken enough today um, but I just wanted to say that you know oh gosh there's just so many different subjects around health or they're not so today is just specifically around the liver um, and and looking at just a few key things so even in the morning if you were to have um half a lemon squeezed into some warm water first thing in the morning that really kick starts the liver in the morning it's a great way so little tiny tweaks to your day and looking at maybe putting in a few more bits of foods um could just be enough and tweaking getting rid of some of the the high fructose um could have a massive effect not just on the liver but all the systems that it affects that i've mentioned and and might just um have a a, a really profound effect on on your health and specifically on your immune function which is why what we're looking at at the moment so i hope you find that helpful and uh, do let me know how you're getting on uh, do continue to share and invite people to this group um, i am putting up these videos onto youtube as well well, my YouTube channel is called Nick Energy and um, you can subscribe to that as well uh, so again I'll put the link in the comments and um, if you're watching this on replay a very uh, big welcome to you and, and, and I wish you a very good day. Bye bye for now.